In this mini lecture, I'm going to explain collection development policies. Specifically, what is a collection development policy and why do we need it? In the literature and in practice, there is ambiguity around terminology. How we define and understand collection development versus collection management has a flow on as to whether we develop collection development policies or collection management policies. Historically, the terms collection development and collection management were used to describe different things. Collection development was the practice of developing collections and was therefore considered to be a subset of the broader collection management, which involved all facets of managing collections from developing to maintenance, from circulation to weeding. The functions of collection development were therefore considered only one part of the whole of collection management. This understanding leads to collection development policies being considered to be just one part of a larger collection management policy. This can be seen in definitions such as that of Clayton and Gorman, who suggests that a collection development policy is a statement of general collection building principles, which delineates the purpose and content of a collection. However, inconsistencies in the literature and in practice lead also to a broader understanding of collection development. And therefore, we can also find definitions such as this from Kennedy, who says, a collection development policy is a written statement of the policies intended to govern the activities of a library in regard to its collection. Now, this definition is something a little broader than what Clayton and Gorman define as a collection development policy. Yet Kennedy explicitly refers to a collection development policy as having this broader remit. Whether or not you refer to it as a collection development policy or a collection management policy, the policy should include and address the rationale of the collection, the mission statement of the library and its collection, the nature of the users of the collection, the purpose and the role of the collection and the nature of the collections, as well as its priorities and goals. How the collection is selected, including specific selection criteria and the development of digital resources in the collection, as well as funding, acquisition and promotion activities, collection evaluation, deselection of resources or weeding, challenge material policies and a policy review. All of these should feature within a collections policy. Regardless of which term we use, and they are often used interchangeably, these policies that guide libraries in collecting and collecting practices have started to see some changes. Some organisations are now choosing to focus on strategies relating to collection management rather than policy. For example, in 2012, the State Library of Queensland replaced its collection development policy with a content strategy, signalling a shift from traditional views of what constitutes a collection and focusing on a vision for the collection and a plan to realise it, rather than a policy that governs its management. The move from print to hybrid collections and the ongoing increase in collection of electronic materials have caused libraries to reconsider what should be covered in their policy and strategy statements. There is still a strong case for having a collection development policy, but the practical realities of maintaining the policy mean that it must be a living document that is kept up to date. Why have a collection management policy? Collection management or development policies are generally written for two audiences, the staff of the library and external stakeholders. In a school's case, most probably parents and teachers. Collection policies therefore have multiple purposes, which we will now explore. Collection management policies are strategic documents, which provide a framework that guides decision-making and accountability within the organisation. In particular, they play an important part in collection planning because they document collecting priorities and identify strengths and weaknesses in the collection. They are the primary tool used to communicate the library's collection management intentions to both those inside the organisation, the staff, and outside the organisation, including users and funding bodies. A collection management policy is essential for a library as it explains why the collection exists. 
The policy documents the library's practices relating to the selection of resources and managing the collection. It deals with selection practices including selection criteria and sets out parameters for the management of collections, including guidelines on donations, preservation, replacement, and so on. The provisions in the policy form the foundation of the library's procedures and practices related to collecting. The policy plays a role in helping librarians to manage both overt and covert censorship. Policies state the library's intentions with regard to freedom of access to information. By documenting the library's intentions, we have a guideline that can inform the practice of selectors, limiting the impact of personal bias and assisting selectors to remain objective. The policy also assists, assists with managing the budget because the policy documents the library's intentions around both format and content. This allows strategic allocation of the budget. It also allows for the management of changes in funding, both increases and decreases. In order to deploy collection budgets responsibly, we need guidelines on the priorities of the organisation around collecting and a collection development policy documents those guidelines for the organisation. Collection management policies can also guide staff in managing complaints and suggestions for purchase from users. Additionally, they can be helpful in managing pressure to alter collecting practice, pressure that may come from administration, parents or vendors. Having a clearly outlined statement on donations and gifts can help manage unwanted but well-intentioned contributions to the collection, while a challenged materials policy can diffuse situations with high tensions as it allows the party raising the objection to respond rationally and in a structured way that enables the issues to be clarified and understood. By documenting the reasons for what the library does and doesn't collect, the collection development or management policy becomes a useful tool for highlighting collecting intentions and for managing external pressures. Finally, Collection development policies can provide a framework within which format and technology changes can be addressed. This has been incredibly important over the last decade as libraries have grappled, grappled with how to take in and manage electronic resources on a variety of platforms and in a variety of formats. What issues are there with collection management or development policies? In the literature and practice, some contest the argument that a collection development policy is a necessary tool for appropriate collection management. Collection development or management policies should not be static, but should have some fluidity to ensure the document responds to changing user needs over time. Writing and updating collection development policies takes time. Data from a variety of sources is used to inform the policy and to be useful, the documents need to be reasonably detailed. Planning for the policies, planning to implement the policy and regularly reviewing the policy are time consuming activities. Some suggest that the work might be for little gain. Finally, some suggest the transparency that collection development policies encourage might be undesirable or even dangerous. Do we actually want the community or all library staff to know much about our collection intentions and the way we cover up our budgets? Is it dangerous to be this honest and open about these things? Are we locking ourselves into a path that perhaps we may need to change down the track? These are all questions that have been put forward. So are collection development policies still relevant? In the school setting, yes. Collecting practices are changing. Libraries are collecting different materials and have different methods of doing so. Publishing models are slowly evolving, but they still have a long way to go. Formats are changing and we lack general agreement on standard formats for e-content. Geographic distribution rights and DRM still impact on provision of e-content. We're still negotiating the roles of print and e-content in libraries of all types. Finally, discovery models are changing too and new standards for resource description are emerging. In this time of change and uncertainty, it's more important than ever that we have policy and strategy to guide us in our collecting practices. Policy and strategy for collecting are still important despite or perhaps because of the fact that collections are changing. 
Regardless of what format resources come in, they must still be managed through their life cycle. As collections change, so too must policies. Over time, they have come to include guidelines on, issuing related, on issues related to collect, electronic collections like per, perpetual access, licensing conditions, cooperative resources, and the library's preferences with regard to purchasing print or e-content. If the policy is kept up to date and evolves to encompass new directions in collecting, it is still a vitally important and useful document that guides the library's collecting practices.